Appreciate everybody taking the time to be here. Certainly a very exciting time of year. Um, it's crazy how fast it's gone. It seems like just yesterday we were getting off the plane in Santa Barbara. Uh, but, but really excited, really happy to be part of this time of year. Obviously, March Madness, and, and obviously in my selfish opinion, is the greatest time of year. Um, and, and we're looking forward to um, this weekend in particular, obviously on Sunday, Sunday evening. Going back to last week, I uh, thought Thursday's game was uh, at Western was a microcosm of our season a little bit where uh, we just haven't been able to get you know everybody clicking on the same page at the same time and, and give Western credit. They came out and made some tough plays. And, but when you start with four turnovers on your first four possessions, your back's against the wall and it's just tough to recover, especially on the road. And then uh, very, very obviously very pleased with where our, the way our guys responded in a quick turnaround against Omaha, Omaha and and it was it was great. It was really encouraging to see our guys come out and shoot it really well. Uh, but to hold a talented offensive team in Omaha uh, like they are at their place to under one point per, per possession was was very encouraging. And, and hopefully we can build some momentum on for that game and some confidence uh, going into this weekend. I'd be happy to take questions. Dave, what is it about Fort Wayne, I guess, that kind of, is it like looking in the mirror when you play this team that it's always been kind of even matchups when you play with yeah, I mean, obviously, John does a tremendous job, and and I not to slight anybody else in the league, and obviously, Mike Dom is is very talented, but John Conchar is playing as well as anybody in the league right now, in my opinion, and just so versatile. Um, you know, he's shooting it at a higher clip and um, aggressive, does a little bit of everything. His, his IQ is is through the roof, and I think a big part of of our struggles against them is is directly dealing with him because even when he's not scoring he's directly involved in making uh, a hockey assist or the actual assist that leads to the basket too and, and they just play so well off of them um, you know they got the capabilities they've done a good job of turning us over um, we've got to do a better job of taking care of the ball but they got great parts and, and John puts those parts in, in good spots How are you guys approaching this with the guys is this a wipe the slate clean we are on the same playing field as everybody else or hold on to what's put us in this position? We have what we call learning experiences up until this point, and um, it's certainly important to learn from those and, and, and grow from those, hopefully, as we've talked about that consistently throughout the year is these growing experiences, learning experiences. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, hopefully we can learn and, and build off some momentum from the Omaha game where we did feel like we finally had – you know, multiple pieces clicking at the, at the same time. Um, but everybody's, you know, zero and zero, and, and there's different things on the line for different people at different times. And, um, you know, for us, it's a place where besides last year, we've gone and we've had, you know, a fair amount of success. And some guys are on this roster that have had had a, a great amount of success, and, and we're going to lean on them to to lead us and, and their experiences to, to help us going forward. Where is uh, Paul Miller as far as in this history of this program? Can you address his, his status? Yeah, I, I did an interview with somebody out of Milwaukee, and uh, this is probably a month to six weeks ago, and, and said it just kind of came out of my mouth. He's going to go down as an all-time great here. And when it originally came out, I was like, oh, easy, Dave. That's a pretty big statement. But as I thought back, you know, you, you look at his numbers across the board, um, you know, he, he should be labeled right there in the equation. I, I'll leave that up to you guys exactly, you know, how, how you want to rate it, you know. But, but um, you know, his numbers speak for himself. He's been a part of a conference championship. He's, he's been back to a conference tournament game. Uh, he, he's led a team to second, second place in the league last year. Um, he's been, obviously been a big part of, of what we're doing this year. And um, it, when, when it comes to numbers and con sheer competitive, he, competitiveness, he's right up there with anybody that I've coached. How is a senior year different from when he was younger? Oh, I think he's, I think the big thing is his maturity. Um, and, and by no means is it perfect, uh, but it's come a long ways in, in being a better teammate to obviously to his teammates and, and to be able to handle, uh, there's still moments where, you know, his lack of success will lead compound itself and into, you know, not getting back in conversion or something like that, where those those are becoming fewer and far between moments where, you know, you could really see that, you know, he was fine his freshman year when, when Lawrence, we had some some leadership, but when he kind of took over the bigger role his sophomore year and into his junior year, some of those things would would compound themselves, the frustrations would compound themselves. and. 
he's just done a better job. He, he's very competitive. He's very bullheaded. Two, two great strengths as a player, but sometimes those can be weaknesses as well. Does, um, his, does it lend itself to the next level as far as his ability in any way? Oh, yeah, I think um, I would say Paul's going to like a lot of guys like he had to do in high school, like he had to do here for a while. Um, he's going to have to go and prove himself at the, at the next level, but that, that's Paul Miller. I mean, Paul Miller is he's kind of had a he has a big chip on his shoulder, and he's always out to prove people wrong. And um, you know, I can tell by the number of inquiries and, and this and that that I've gotten, uh, Paul's going to have some tre tremendous opportunities. Then it's just like for everybody, it's a matter of, of how that you know first, second, third year goes for him. Guys like Taylor, he's got some guys before him now here. Yeah, no question. And when we were in Omaha, a guy like Andre Smith uh, was was around, and and so it was you know to for for me, Paul didn't talk specifically with Andre, but I did, and you know, and and and, and Andre has connections, and and he'll Paul will have options, and I, I wouldn't be as comfortable sitting up here uh, with Paul's situation, uh, you know, six seven years ago, but because of Andre Smith and Taylor Braun and Ben Woodside, Dexter Warner, Trayvon Wright, Lawrence Alexander. You know, all the guys that have played professionally, the contacts, the resources that we have are uh, a lot better. The potential of three games in three days, how do you guys as a staff, obviously you got to get the first one to worry about the next two, but uh, how, how do you guys prepare, plan to prepare for that if you have to? We're fully 100% locked in on Fort Wayne. And, and if we're fortunate to take care of business, 6 o'clock on Sunday, you know, then we'll um, – figure out that, that next one, whoever it is. But uh, to me, tournament time is if you're fortunate enough to, to get that first one, you know, anything can happen. And, and that's really at where our focus is. What comfort in the tournament for you guys? You guys have had success down in Sioux Falls. You know, uh, I hope so uh, for, for myself, for Paul, for AJ, for some of those other, um, other guys that have been around a little bit. But it's also going to be important to, you know, if we can sneak a couple guys like Chris Quayle, Rocky Cruiser, Cameron Hunter, we can just sneak them in the building you know, Saturday for those games just to kind of see some of the atmosphere. Uh, shoot around um, Sunday morning will be important too. But just, again, having a conversation with Chris Quayle last night, you know, we're still going to go and play. And it's going to be 94 feet of court and, you know, two 10-foot high, you know, hoops. And so just going to play basketball. And um, it's a great event, and we're excited to be a part of it. What does the schedule look like for this week for you guys? Um, you know, practicing throughout the week, and, and we'll probably won't head down there until Saturday. Just try to keep a normal routine, keep them in their beds as long as possible, and, um, you know, keep their focus on, on where it needs to be and, and, and be students throughout the course of the week. If you, if you start just, you know, um, going through the game in your brain a thousand times, it's never going to play out that, like that. You know, it's important to get the reps and, and do some of those things and, and just, you know, keeping that normal, normal routine as much as possible because obviously um, there's, there's a lot of excitement level come, come Sunday evening. Dr. Taylor, since he got his USA jersey? <laughs> no, I haven't, but just randomly uh, Friday night in, in the Omaha Hotel, um, ESPNU had their game on with Cuba. Um, um, and a pretty neat experience. So the coach is um, Van Gundy, and when I was out with the Celtics two years ago, um, Van Gundy was out there. It was yeah, two years ago. He was out there in a character and actually kind enough to buy me lunch. So um, you know, it looked like Taylor's minutes were just kind of okay, getting him in and out. But you know, just a really a great experience for him. Hey, I talked to you about this before the season started about what's going on in men's yeah. college basketball. You guys played Arizona earlier this season. Can you describe, I guess, what, I guess, on a whole, the status of men's college basketball right now? Is it a couple black guys with the sport? Uh, I guess I should, you know, be careful and choose my words wisely. I, I, I can honestly look, you know, you and everybody else in this room in the eye and tell you that I've never seen anything specific. I've never, you know, been on a wiretap conversation or seen money exchange hands. Now, um, being around the profession, you hear a lot of those things. And, and those things to me are, they are, I've seen the word disgusting. They're hurtful. They're bad for our profession. And there is no question that at, at starting at the very top and, and working its way down into us coaches and then players that something catastrophically needs to be done um, because it is, uh, uh, we, we pride ourselves to, you know, we'll make a mistake here. Our intention wasn't to make that mistake, but those mistakes happen. 
Uh, but we feel like, you know, as much as possible, we're playing by the rules. And, and when you play by the rules and someone's getting that leg up by, by cheating or doing whatever, it, it's frustrating. It, it's very frustrating. And character and integrity are at a premium from everything that I stand for, everything that this program's about. And a lot of what we're hearing doesn't reflect any kind of virtue or, or character and integrity to, at any standpoint. So I, I hope at a high level something needs to be done and, and – to me, uh, uh, maybe where I'm going too much off, but a little show clause here, a little slap on the wrist, it's not getting it done. And, and we, we need to take some catastrophic measures to, to fix some things that are clearly aren't, aren't moving in a good direction. Do you believe this will happen now that, that what you've seen, this is enough to get the process rolling, that something may happen? Let me just say this loud and clear, Dom. I hope something happens. I, for me to believe, I don't know, because... I've hoped in the past, and, and nothing's really changed. Uh, I think some of the people that have turned a blind eye clearly knew something was going on. Um, but does character integrity get put on the back burner because of dollars and cents? A lot of the schools are Power Six programs that were named in this. Um, do you think that it's a unique problem to them, or they are just the focus because they're more of the big money getters and mid-majors are left out? I think there's certain levels at, at all levels, to be honest with you. Um, you know, those are some of those dollar numbers, dollar figures are just, you know, crazy to me. Um, but like I heard somebody say, if they're paying or if, that, if that's actually happening, again, it's complete speculation, complete speculation. But if that's actually happening, you know, they're outbidding somebody for them. So, you know, it, it wasn't like they was could have been $500 or whatever. So, again, um, this is my fourth year as the head Division One coach, so I'm a lot more comfortable standing up here and saying some of these things. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, I yeah, I, I've, what I know, and I shouldn't say no, but what I hear and and a lot of speculation, a lot of these things are going on at a, at a lot of levels. Maybe not to as 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 significant of amount or as much, but yeah, I mean, it, there there is an epidemic in college basketball that needs to be fixed. Ron and what he's able to do. You mentioned a lot of guys who have played in the profession, professional realm. We talked to Chris Kleiman so much about it, what it does for his program to have those guys making it at the next level. Are you starting to see that at all? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's something when you talk to Jarius Cook or Vinny Shahid or Jackson Notak that, that, that you know, they're very intrigued with that. I, I think the other thing for, for me, too, is, is you look at some of those guys, that intrinsic motivation – um, you know, is, is a big part of it too. And, and I go back to Taylor. Taylor is such a unique situation, um, an anomaly in a lot of cases where um, comes from Oregon and, and we didn't find him until May and halfway through his freshman year, he's going to leave because Freddie Coleman and Michael Tweed are kicking him all over the court. And, um, and, and you could see, start to see some talent, but it was really like his, his junior, senior summer when he got hooked up with Woodside and really started working out where he poured himself into it. And, um, um, you know, so it works. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's pretty neat. It's pretty special. Um, I, I, I really think Andre Smith and Ben Woodside are kind of the pioneers that, that have kind of blazed those trails, so to speak, and, and had extensive careers over there. And, and now you're seeing kind of Taylor's probably right there in that next equation. And and then then L.A. and Dexter and, and, and Corey and Trayvon are, are – um, it was fun just FaceTiming with Dexter last week. Dexter's, you know, kind of a – he's going to kill me for saying this, but a little bit of a materialistic kid, you know, nice car, got some shoes. And so when you're overseas, you never know what you're going to get or what you're going to expect. Part of the reason why, you know, Taylor came back to go into the G League. and But, but Dexter's really enjoying himself and, and meeting some good teammates. Obviously, it helps that Corey's on his team. But there's some neat experiences over there for our guys and, and – um, what did Dexter say? If you can delay going into the cubicle for a while, then you might, you might as well do it.